You know, when I first got into show business, I used to earn extra money sometimes playing piano in various cocktail lounges in uh, Des Moines, Phoenix, Chicago. And it occurred to me the other day that just as the British go to a pub for relaxation, a lot of Americans turn to their friendly saloon or neighborhood piano bar for their leisure moments. And uh, this is how I remember it, seriously. Join us, won't you, at the West Covina Melody Room. <laughs> Great. You really play a head piano. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, let me buy you a highball, Steve. Nah. How about a Rob Roy? Mm-mm. How about one of them tall Hawaiian jobs with a parasol, huh? <laughs> no, thanks. My fingers are dry. Ah, his fingers! Ah, he's too much! <laughs> You're too much, Steve. Hey, Steve. This is a very big night for us. Oh, really? Yeah. A year ago today, we were married. No kidding. That's lovely. And you're spending the anniversary here at the Melody Room? Why not? We spent our wedding night here. Hey. <laughs> really very flattering. Played a song, Steve. The song? Yeah, that romantic ballad you played on our wedding night. You remember? I think I do, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you are much too much. <laughs> But that's not it. That's not it? Uh, try a little tenderness. Right. Yeah. Okay. To the loving couple. <laughs> she may be weary. Women do get weary. Wearing the same shabby dress. And when she's weary, try a little tenderness. Sweetheart. Don't touch me. <laughs> What? I said, don't touch me. You know she's waiting. <laughs> just anticipating. Why can't I touch you? I don't like being lulled in public. Mauled? You call this mauling? I said, don't touch me. Things she may never forget. <laughs> Why she's without them. How'd you like a hobbly wall banger up your nose? <laughs> a little tenderness. Not just sentimental, she has her grief and her care. I told you, Richard, I don't like being touched in public. You don't like being touched anyway. <laughs> I want to touch you. I'm your husband. I have my connubial rights. I mean it. Don't touch me. Hey! <laughs> she don't want you to touch her. Don't touch her. <laughs> Mind your business, fat lady. <laughs> Soft and gentle Makes it easier to bear Hey, uh, what did you just say to my wife? I said if she entered a Miss Piggy contest She'd come in last (laughs) Would you care to step outside? She's not going to look any better outside (laughs) I'm going to put your lights up Yeah, you and what army, gorilla breasts? Can it, Richard? Oh, butt out, Eskimo pie. <laughs> Women don't forget it. All right, I'll give you Eskimo pie. <laughs> hey, if it ain't Carmen Miranda. <laughs> this is funny, huh? That's funny. You think that's funny, huh? Hysterical. I'll show you funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'd ruin your dress, too, but you beat me to it. <laughs> oh, Miss, can I have a little of that chopped liver? Mm. Oh, <laughs> Love is their whole happiness. <laughs> <laughs>
nice little pool you've got here, Mr. Hefner. Uh, what time do the others get here? <laughs> well, lunchtime. Yeah. What, uh, what have you got today? Oh, I got a beauty. It's a tuna fish, egg salad, and watercress. Makes a terrific sandwich. Well, you're lucky. All I ever get is this ham and cheese. Is that right? You're darn right it is, yeah. Ham and cheese yesterday, ham and cheese today, ham and cheese tomorrow. For the last three years, that's all it's been, ham and cheese. And I'll tell you something, I'm getting pretty sick up to here with it all, I'll tell you. Yeah? I bring home a good paycheck, you know that. Sure. Then I open my lunchbox, and there it is, staring me in the face, ham and cheese. Mm. Oh, yes, yes, once there was a switch, 18 months ago. Yeah. Cheese and ham. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick and I'm tired and I've had it up to here. I'm sick and tired of these ham and cheese sandwiches. Well, listen, why don't you just talk to your wife about it? Well, I'm not married. I make them myself. <laughs> Stay tuned for more laughs with Bob and Ray and Billy Crystal. Right after this. My favorite funny man of all time is the late Robert Benchley. And one of the reasons that I'm maybe the world's number one Bob and Ray fan is they seem to vibrate on that same nutty level that he did. They're just terrific, and we're very honored to have them on our show this evening. Welcome once again, Bob and Ray. Good evening. <laughs> Leave a Lou here with Mr. Virgil Terwilliger, the president and founder of Random Thoughts Greeting Card Company. He's a man who we're given to understand is setting out to revolutionize the greeting card industry. Well, make yourself at home here, Wally. It's uh, true. We, uh, we have a pretty dynamic thing going on here, but I always have time for the press. I understand you have a really unique approach to greeting cards, Mr. Terwilliger. Oh, heck, I don't know. I guess anybody could have thought of it. I was... Uh, just in the store one day, and I realized there wasn't any card, for instance, uh, for a brother-in-law who crash-landed a hang glider in the boysenberry vat at a yogurt factory. <laughs> I just couldn't find a card for an occasion like that. I guess if uh, there is one, you'd have to look a long time for it. Huh? Well, now, that's my reasoning, exactly. That's when it hit me. I figured, uh, you know, there must be a lot of occasions besides birthdays, anniversaries, and holidays, and all that kind of junk. And you've come up with appropriate cards, right? I'll say. Now, let me give you an example. Now, this is for a man whose wife has run off with a hairdresser. <laughs> happens all the time, I guess. This is, uh, I know someday you're sure to miss me, but I hope you're happy with that great big sissy. tailor-made for the occasion, isn't it? Now, we haven't missed the bet. Now, there are plenty of Mother's Day cards, right? But how about stepmothers? You know, a lot of kids resent their stepmothers. And up until now, they hadn't any way to express it, you know, through a greeting card. Well, I guess that has been a problem, all right. Doesn't have to be any more. Here it is. <laughs> You're not my real mom. That's true. And even though I hate your guts, stepmom dear, this card's for you. <laughs> Put your name down Sign here. Sign it right there. <laughs> well, it's curious. Uh, nobody's thought about stepmother cards before. It is incredible, isn't it? And up until now, there hasn't been any card to send a guy who's getting his first tax on it. Oh, I don't think even Hallmark can do that. <laughs> well, we do. It goes like this. Don't be nervous and full of repentance. The worst you'll get is a 20-year sentence. <laughs> That's catchy. I noticed this one when I first came in. It's... Black and has a single red rose. Very attractive, I Isn't think. It? It's for a dead gardener. <laughs> you really cover everything, don't you? That's right. Now, here's one for October 3rd. Is that a holiday? Well, no reason it can't be. <laughs> what does that one say? Happy October 3rd. <laughs> that doesn't look like you spent a lot of time uh, working on it. Well, there's no use knocking yourself out till you find out if it catches on. <laughs> So we're testing happy September 9th, too. And we'll go, you know, whichever one catches on. Hey, here's an idea. How about December 4th? Who'd buy that? <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. You're the expert. This is Wally Ballou with Virgil Terwilliger here at the Random Thoughts Greeting Card Company saying so long. Greetings. <laughs>
I didn't have to dye my hair to get into the White House. <laughs> you know, we're very pleased. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm wheezing my... <coughs> Reagan thinks hair pollution's been figured out. Well, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we're very pleased to have uh, the great Billy Crystal from Soap with us tonight, one of the cleverest of the modern group of comedians. Unlike most comedians, he happens to be a terrific actor, and I think you'll be very impressed with this demonstration of his versatility in this quite poignant portrayal. This is not really a comedy routine, a poignant portrayal of an ex-prize fighter, Mr. Billy Crystal. <laughs> Twenty five cents a bag. Let's go. Peanuts, popcorns, twenty five cents a bag. There you go. Hey, thank you, pal. Thank you, pal. Okay, peanuts, popcorns, twenty five. Hurry up, the flights are starting to. Hey, how are you, huh? How are you, huh? How are you, huh? <laughs> Who are you, huh? Oh, it's you, huh? How are you? Huh? Yeah, you look great, you look great, you look great, you look great. How are you, huh? Yeah, you still fighting? Oh, oh, yeah. How come? You're 72. <laughs> I don't see so good. I got all this stuff hanging over here. Uh, you in shape? Are you in shape? Give me a left. Give me a left. Give me a left. That's great. You in shape? That's great. You got to be in shape at our age, you know? Because at our age, you never know when you're going to have to open a door. You know what I'm saying? Hey, me? No, I ain't in shape. I ain't been in shape since I come back from the war. Yeah, WWW2. That's it. The papers in the papers. You know what I'm saying? I enlisted December 8, 1941. Yeah. And I was over there for everything. Three and a half straight years, Ewo Baton, right there in the front line, every day, not a nothing. You know what I'm saying? Right there. You know what I get? A weekend off for three and a half years. You know that? If I worked at Macy's, I would have gotten two weeks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It's all changed. Things ain't like they was then. See, things are now. Things are now. That's different than then, right? Because then it would be the same. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's different now. The fight game's all changed. Oh, yeah. The difference is this to me. The blacks is the best fighters now, you see. The blacks are the best fighters maybe to ever watch. You got, you got Holmes and Weaver and, and, and Hearns. You got all these great fighters, see. But I think we had it tougher in the 30s and the 40s when we was fighting because the Jewish fighters were the best fighters then. That's right. And I think that the Jews are tougher to fight because the Jews are used to fighting at home. <laughs> yeah, all day long they're going, you did, you didn't, you did, you didn't, you did, you didn't, you did, you didn't. Did. 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 What did I do? Don't make me feel guilty. You left that much soda in the bottle, you put it back in the refrigerator. Oh, yeah? Who leaves an egg in a cup for a week? Put it in the wrong dish. What dish? You got two sets of dishes, Mr. Kosher, Mrs. Kosher. One this, back and forth, back and forth. You ain't so kosher. When you eat out, you eat shellfish. So by the time they get in the ring, they're all upset. I go in the ring and go, did you? Go, I don't know. And they beat the heck out of me. <laughs> but I look better now, don't I? Yeah, I got this fixed. Yeah. I had it put in the middle. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. See, everything is different. Everything is different. The fight game's been very good to me. It has. Oh, yeah, I got a steady job, don't I? I got to tell you a story. When I come back from over there, it was like 1945 and change. You know what I'm saying? It was like December. It was Christmas time. And I put out feelers, you see, to all the promoters to let them know that, that I was back in town so I could get a fight, so I could get some money to buy presents because it was Christmas time, you know? So I get a call and I could fight that night at St. Nick's Arena, right? And at the time, I was living in Queens, New York, right? So this is December. So, so I, I get a call and I could fight, you know? And it's been so long. I go outside and there's two feet of snow on the ground. And the street lights... It's like glistening on it. And, and the reflection of the subway with the shadows. It was pretty, you know? Made you forget that you were in Queens. And so I get to the arena, 
sold out, standing room only SRO, right? There ain't nothing stops New Yorkers when they can see blood, you know? So, 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 I'm in the, I'm in the locker room, and the promoter, Tex Bernanke, remember him? He comes up to me, he goes, Tony, so glad to see you. So glad you come back in one piece. Listen, I got good news, and I got bad news. Now, right away, I know I'm in trouble. Because the good news, bad news jokes weren't invented until 30 years later, you know? <laughs> so I said, what's the good news? He said, the good news is you're making 30 bucks tonight. I said, that's great. What's the bad news? He said, the bad news is you got to fight all nine fights. Nobody else showed up. <laughs> wow, I says to myself, this is, I can't do it. I can't do it. The crowd is going to know it's me. They're going to know it's me. And what's worse, the other fighters are going to know it's me. You know? Oh, what am I going to do? I can't do it. I can't do it. He says, no, listen, Tony, nobody will know. See, I got a plan. I'm going to have the ring guy introduce us different people. And... I'm going to put you in different colored shorts. <laughs> I ain't exactly stupid. I looked at him and said, it ain't going to work because there ain't nine colors. See? <laughs> he put in an extra five bucks and I did it. But the point is this. You can't be taken advantage of. And that's what's happened. The Japanese kicked our butts all over the South Pacific till Truman had to drop the big one until he knew he meant business. We sold them to the 3rd Avenue. Well, we got it right back in our face. You ask anybody who's over until we were scared stiff. Bullets going left and right. If you don't know who the Yankees center fielder was, you could be killed. I'm telling you, pal, it was terrible. My pals going left and right, left and right. I was scared stiff for the guns going off. I was only 24 years old. So how are you doing? Are you still fighting? <laughs> how come? He's 72. See, I don't see so good. I got all this stuff hanging over here. You see, the thing is this. And the thing I ever got out of boxing about life is this. I'll tell you the truth, pal, that there's a time to quit. You know it, and I know it. These kids inside there think that it goes on forever. And you know that I know that it don't. The time to quit is when they're hitting you. But you don't know that they hit you no more. Right? When some big buck comes out and does a tap dance on your face, bop it that bop it bum, and you don't feel it. That's the time to get out. You know when I learned that? The eighth fight of that night. <laughs> I hit the canvas for the 47th time. I looked out over that crowd, and I seen a familiar face in the third row saying, Stay down, don't stay down. It was me. <laughs> and, and, and some guys never learned that. They never learned that. They never learned that. They, 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 they hang around too long and, 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 and they get punchy. Or they can't... Uh, 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 remember stuff, you know? <laughs> That's good it didn't happen to us. Hey, listen, the bells just went off. The fights are starting. Did you hear them too? Good. Hey, listen, hey, take a bag. You know what? Take both of them. Take two, yeah. No, 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 it's on me. It's on me. It's okay. It's old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll see you after. Maybe we'll have a beer. We'll break training. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll be here. What the heck else am I going to do? All right, I'll see you. Yeah, yeah. Peanuts, popcorn, 25 cents. A hey, how are you? Come on, Johnny. All right, this is a stick-up. Hand over all your money and facts. Anything. Anything you want. Hey, look at this. There must be thousands there. Now yeah. we can have anything that money can buy. Oh, boy. What do you think we ought to buy first? I know. A getaway car. <laughs> Come in. Ah, Mr. Hockmeister? Yeah, from the Vienna String Ensemble. Well, we're so honored, sir. We've been expecting you. Just sit right down there and make yourself comfortable. We are really terribly honored, sir, that you would come to America, and I'm particularly honored that you would want to have my agency book your concerts. We're so proud of that possibility. I'll tell you, to show you the kind of creative booking I do, you're going to love this rock concert of mine that we're planning for tonight. Terrific lineup of groups, really heavy stuff. I could hardly wait. Who's um, on first? That's right, how'd you know? 
<laughs> no, I said, who is on first? That's what I said, man. The who is on first, followed by uh, uh, Kiss and Fanny. <laughs> Kiss what? No, no, no. Not what, who. I couldn't get what. Could we please get one thing straight? Who opens the show? That's right. <laughs> now you got it. What's right? No, not what. Who's right? Don't start with me. <laughs> I'm not starting with you. I'm starting with who. <laughs> Who's on first? All right, forget that. You've got the second act, yes? Well, I tried to get yes, but they said no. <laughs> yes, said no? Yes. I spoke to them today, and they said I should call yesterday. I see. Well, I could get yesterday, but yesterday won't be here till tomorrow. Who? No, I got who today. What about tomorrow? Yesterday. Now, I, I tried awfully hard. I tried to get Chicago, but Chicago's in Europe. Excuse me, I think you're going to find Chicago is in America. <laughs> no, no, wait a minute. No possibility of that. America is in Cleveland. I know that because I booked him there myself. Let me see if I understand this. First, you put together a concert as follows. Yeah. Who's on first? Yep. Yeah. Followed by a kissed Fanny. I... <laughs> yes, said no. Uh-huh. Yesterday won't be here until tomorrow. Correct. Chicago is in Europe. That's right. And America is in Cleveland. You're right. Pardon me for a moment, please. Yes. Be so kind. I'd be glad Surely can see paper. Oh, lovely. Uh, uh -huh. What the hell are you You're going to do what with that pitchfork? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, we've gotten some more requests from people who want to see uh, our Hollywood and Vine feature, or as we call it around the office, camera on the street. So if we have our cameras out there, yes, by George, we're now at the famous corner of Hollywood and Vine. There it is. It's Don't Walk Time once again. Now let's see what we pick up a little grouping there. I wonder what they're talking about. We have no microphones there is probably saying, I told you you're too young to smoke. <laughs> Strange part is this man is a perfect stranger. <laughs> now we look down into a automobile at the corner. This man has been there for four weeks trying to find reverse. <laughs> Scooboo doo 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 doo. But he's really going to take off when he gets it. <laughs> hey, roll bars. And I would say that one of these men is dressed wrong for the weather. <laughs> so you go right down this end of the block, and that's where you can buy a nice jacket. <laughs> hey, is that? Yes, it is. Dorothy Miller, ladies and gentlemen. Famous Dorothy Miller. <laughs> and her truth goes marching on as she plows away across Hollywood. <laughs> she prowls by night. <laughs> and boy in camouflage pants. If he ever has an accident, it'll be awfully hard to find, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, a little ethnic child of some kind. <laughs> Just came from the Gap where he bought some new diapers. <laughs> Form fitting, of course. And what do we have? <laughs> what is that? That looks like Jane. <laughs> is that my wife? I swear, that looks like Jane. That's what she sleeps in, I know that. <laughs> Oh, seriously, that looks like my wife. 
<laughs> oh, no, it's not. That's weird. She walks very, you know, effeminate like Jane. Ah. Here's a... <laughs> Lady who comes here looking for Rudolph Valentino every... <laughs> September the 47th. Wearing the familiar pretzel on her head. <laughs> Used to run a little tea room in Providence, Rhode Island. <laughs> until the police closed it up. <laughs> she works her way fearfully across the street, looking now to the left, and... <laughs> very sweet, very ladylike. Used to be a lot of her kind here in town. Followed by this man. <laughs> That's why there aren't so many of her kind in town anymore. I think that police car is being given a ticket, folks. Let's see what's up. Oh, they're just... Uh... Hi, how are you? <laughs> One's a real copy, others from Adam 12. Let's see what we have here. First time I ever saw a father and son where the kid was drunk. show for tonight, and as you thank us, I in turn would like to thank our really delightful guests, Billy Crystal, the wonderful Bob and Ray, Foster Brooks, Billy Saluga, Miss Kay Ballard, and all our Krellman players, and I'd also like to thank my doctor, who advised me to quit smoking cold turkey. <laughs> really, thanks to him, I haven't smoked a cold turkey in months. <laughs> in closing, I'd like to bring you the immortal words of Voltaire, or was it Doc Severance, one of those guys, who said, if you can keep your head while all about you are losing theirs... You're obviously not married to Henry VIII. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>